Hey guys, happy Monday. I hope you are enduring the changes that daylight savings has wrought upon the land. Yes, it is very cold and it is very dark, very early up here in Idaho now. I am not a fan. Anywho, we're gonna do some grammar like we do. I was also wondering if there's a specific grammar skill that you want me to fold into future sentences, just leave it in the comment section below. Let me know what you need from me. Otherwise, if I don't hear from you, I'm just gonna keep on trucking with what I've got set up and what I've been building. All right, it's Monday, so we're gonna fix two sentences like we do. Let's go. All right, let's get started. You jot down this sentence exactly as it is, mistakes and all, and then I will cool my heels right here waiting with the pause button until you are ready to talk about the answers. All right, you guys, sentence number one this week. Mark Twain's novels, I believe, stand the test of time because each story has something for everyone to identify with. All right, put me on pause and I will be waiting for you when you're ready. All right, we jump in with Mark Twain's apostrophe S. Um, he wrote the novels, they belong to him. So you need that apostrophe that shows possession. I believe is an extra little, almost like an aside out of the sentence where the, the writer is taking a break in the main idea just to say, I believe. So when we have those non-essential add-ins placed into the middle of a sentence, we're gonna have commas there as little anchors on either side. I actually, I'm gonna go crazy here. Maybe I would just take it out all the way because I know you believe it because you said it because you wrote it, but I'll let you decide. Uh, in terms of punctuation, we want to have those commas, but you could actually just drop for economy of language the I believe altogether and it would be awesome. So Mark Twain's novels stand the test of time. See, that sounds good because each story has something for everyone to identify with. Talking about economy of language, you don't even need that ending part to identify with. With is one of those prepositions. And I've talked before in previous mugshots about it creates a mushiness at the end of your sentence to end with a preposition. Remember we did those, where are you at? Hey, where are my friends at? Sentences in the comment section, which was fun. Uh, so I'm going to say, just strike it all together. I also wrote, um, don't end with to be verbs there in your green note. And that's the words like is, was, were, are, being, have been, could have been, should have been, all of those little helper verbs. They just create a really soft, mushy, she weak ending to your sentence where I would I would much rather end with everyone because each story has something for everyone because each story has something for everyone to identify with it's just wordy and clunky and no good so drop those last three words again that's more style than grammar but you know it'll make you more powerful on the page all right next sentence this week when I graduate I'm not sure what I want to study where I want to live or who I want to be a lament that many of my seniors come, to, actually all my, <laughs> all grades uh, suffer from this. Like, what are you going to do with your life? What's it going to be? Well, those are big existential questions. I probably can't answer on a YouTube video, but we can punctuate it and fix your grammar. So hit pause, punctuate this correctly, fix. You know what? I'm going to give you a heads up to be verb form at the end. Go ahead and fix that for me. Let's see what you did. All right. When I graduate, we've talked before, when you begin a sentence with when or the word if, you're going to have a comma coming up pretty quickly. And looky there. There we go. That is ugly and messy. Let's get rid of that. All right. Just keep that comma right there. When I graduate, comma, I'm not sure of three things. We have a series of three. We've had one of these not too long ago. Um, when you have a series of three, you need to punctuate them with commas separating each of the legs. And I like to keep the comma before the third leg, which is what we call the Oxford comma, which I have right here. So I'm unsure of three things. I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure what I want to study or what, where I want to live, or who I want to be. So we're setting them up in nice parallel structure so we don't have any issues there, but we do have an issue with ending with to be. Now in this time, because I don't want to end with to be, I've actually added a few more words just to make it sound like it ends on a stronger note, or who I want to be in my adult life, period. Is there a way to rephrase that with more economy of language? Hmm, that sounds like a good challenge for the comment section. What do you guys think? Could you reword the ending of the sentence? All right, keep it school appropriate, y'all. You know, whenever we do these things in the comment section, I got kids all over the place, teenagers here. So let's keep it school appropriate. Could you reword the end of that sentence better than how I worded it? I don't know. 
challenge accepted, I hope, in the comments section. All right, that is it for this time around. If you don't want to take the challenge, just end the sentence the way I did, uh, who I, or who I want to be in my adult life, period, and you are good to go for Mugshot 13. Hope you're well. Subscribe, like, tell a friend, be an awesome YouTube citizen. Thank you for joining me. I will see you guys on Wednesday. We've got our vocab word coming up like we always do. Uh, and then Freestyle Friday, you just never know what I'm going to drop on you. Friday, I'm coming up with more stuff. So I'll see you guys then. Have a great week. Bye.